Hello guys! Yesterday we were all surprised to learn that the President of the United States, Joe Biden, allowed Ukraine to use long-range missiles like Atakams when destroying Russian military ammunition or target the locations of the North Korean troops. Because what are they doing next to the Ukrainian border? This was long awaited and very much needed permission and definitely supported by our European allies like the United Kingdom and France who uh, simultaneously gave a similar permission to the Ukrainian armed forces. And you might have noticed we haven't used this permission yet, but panic is all over Russia, starting from various comments typical Russian terror and psychological blackmail technologies and finishing with the serious troubles on the Russian stock market which reacted to the news on the permission to strike deeper inside the Russian Federation. So let's discuss, is it an escalation, a de-escalation and what it actually means for the defeat of the global evil Russia and its partners that actually back it up without any doubt for too long. My name is Anna, I'm from Ukraine, I'm in Ukraine and today I'm in the heart of brave Ukraine, Kyiv, and I'm really happy to update you on this permission to strike inside Russia from the capital of Ukraine. Subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity and to see the defeat of the Kremlin, because this will happen. I keep repeating that Ukraine is the future of this world when Russia is its past. And what kind of future awaits us in Europe, in the world, depends on how quickly and how effectively we defeat and demilitarize this evil. Honestly, no one expected that the permission will come. It was needed since the very start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but good that we have it now when Russia goes all in, using a tremendous amounts of its own people and the backup from North Korea. Also, according to some rumors, and you know they always have something behind them, North Korea was ready to deploy 100,000 more soldiers to participate in Russian war against Ukraine. But somehow, all those who keep supporting the Kremlin forget about this move and do not mention it as an escalation. And I hate listening how people keep saying about the de-escalation, the need for de-escalation, especially when after the talks over the phone with Kanzler Scholz, Putin, organizes one of the most massive missile attacks on Ukraine and targets us even with hypersonic missiles. Today, 10 people were killed in Odessa after that hit on the central district of this beautiful city that is actually a part of UNESCO heritage and thus a global heritage. So what de-escalation are we talking about? The only way to stop this nightmare is not to negotiate with a war criminal. Because I can give you a really long list of all the treaties and agreements that Russia has violated within the previous years, starting from the Budapest Memorandum itself and finishing with lots of articles in various international agreements and UN documents. So there is no need to sign another agreement which Russia will violate tomorrow or in two weeks when it feels like attacking other countries. And we observe these tendencies because what has happened with the internet cables connecting Finland and Germany, connecting Lithuania and Sweden? Do you really think it's uh, an accident or as someone of my friend subscribers beautifully joked, sea otters? I greatly doubt. These are special military operations against your countries organized by Russia that actually fight against the West. And not just the West as a part of the world, but all people who share democratic values, who want freedom, who still have elections in their countries. 
Please subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and to see the collapse of the Kremlin because it will happen. It will happen quickly, it will be very loud and unexpected as always because if you remember the collapse of the Soviet Union or if you don't you can ask your parents or your grandparents it also came quite unexpectedly and out of various various uh, reasons one of the central for its serious as Putin often says geopolitical catastrophe and in reality great success of lots of freedom-loving nations was economy and right now we observe tremendous problems inside the Russian economy starting from the huge inflation that they cannot stop continuing with raids and collapse of lots of construction uh, building uh, companies, unemployment rates. But, but what is also interesting, the reaction of the Russian stock market on Biden's permission to strike deep inside Russia, it literally collapsed. And the only thing we need is not to soften sanctions that have finally reached their strengths and multiplied by totally dumb decisions of the Kremlin because they keep pretending they keep faking numbers believing it will work somehow out and if allies continue supporting Ukraine and I think that's the only way to continue normal life on this planet because once again as uh, one of the key first articles beautifully describes Ukraine is a battle it is not the final destination of putin and xi's and north korean war against the democratic countries and oh my god with all our strengths with all our confidence we are in danger history remembers lots of examples when more culturally politically socially developed societies fell under the negative, violent, brutal influence of, let's say, the Ords. And Russia is the Ord. For me, personally, as a Ukrainian, I prefer to compare it not with the empire that have lots of colonies, but with a brutal, violent Ord that simply lived and extended by stealing, looting, raping, and pretending that it is reach when in reality it does not create anything it does not produce anything it only sells the resources it has in the lands of once occupied other nations and the day when the kremlin will collapse many beautiful nations can be born and don't be afraid of them what we observe right now is serious panic in russia uh, Putin does not know how to command this decision. I'm sure he will have more to uh, try and bully the world after we finally start demilitarizing Russia in Kursk, for example. But don't be afraid of the red lines that Russia keeps drawing and erasing. I have found lots of good quotes on Blue Sky. By the way, I'm already on this social media platform, so join me there and uh, it demonstrates uh, how good it is to be <laughs> in a free uh, space. So anyway, uh, it uh, says that we remember times when Putin said no Poland in NATO, no Lithuania in NATO, no uh, Estonia, then no Sweden and and what and nothing because Putin is in the past same as his monstrous Soviet Union that he desperately tries to reconstruct but such monsters do not travel to the future and no matter what Ukraine will be there and you know I will try to add more everyday stories to my vlogs and today as Russia was targeting my country with ballistic missiles that actually took lives of many in Odessa, for example, I did not know about that happening. And I was standing in a really long queue in my favorite bookstore on Hrishchatek Street in Kiev, that is a Sands bookstore. And it was a real queue of people standing to buy books because we know we will win the war, because we know we will have to build safer 
and not just Ukraine or Europe, save a world with our experience how to stand against evil bullies. So please, don't listen to those who say that protecting Ukrainian borders, which are actually the only red line, you somehow escalate. By defending itself, a victim cannot escalate. And please share these videos on your social media platforms because Russia is super active during this period and tries to influence people's opinion. But you all know that, as President Zelensky very correctly says, if you want to end this war, get out of Ukraine, Russian invaders. It is that simple. Join me on Threads, Blue Sky, Instagram, and I'm still on X, and we have a Discord community, and you can find all the links you need in the description of this video. Check our merch shop for lots of good items that work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine, and actually a very good cultural, political, and cute presence for all the upcoming holidays. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and sponsors of the channel. But most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. Warmest greetings from the heart of my brave country, Kyiv, that I love so much. And I dream sometime soon you will be able to come, experience, watch, listen, taste and feel. Because it is indeed a very strong and beautiful city. Slava Ukraini!